Wolverines are the toughest frag magnets in the galaxy. But when they're in trouble, guess who they call? Winning a battle is more than just shooting enemy soldiers. It's about saving your own. I protect every member of my squad with my life. Sometimes I think I'm the only thing holding them together. Who am I? I'm Lieutenant Morales. I'm your man. Ugh. I'm gonna need a lot of bandages. I'm Dranor. Old rivals sought to bring Azeroth to its knees. And while the Iron Tide was quelled, they were but servants of a more ancient foe that has not forgotten our defiance. The vengeance of the burning shadow has come. most desperate hour, we must wield the power of the enemy against them. For we stand once more upon the brink of destruction. of the void pre-purchase now at starcraft.com
The 2015 World Championship Series Global Finals is brought to you in part by Intel, Windows 10, MasterCard, and T-Mobile. One half of the quarterfinals down now. We're waiting for the other side of the bracket. Who will get another shot to go to the finals here at the WCS Global Finals? We kick off the bottom half of the bracket once again with another PvP, but perhaps a very different flavor. Our first player, he's a legend. He's won countless titles. He's set nicknames for himself, and he seems to always find a way to be relevant. But the way to lock that down would be to win a title here at the Global Finals happening at BlizzCon 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me to the stage. It is Rain. And his opponent, his name is just filled with dollar signs at this point, and he wants to have that shot too, to get that second WCS Global Champion title. You all know who it is. Hear it right now, it is SOS. Will really fuel SOS, or will Rain prove us all wrong by taking him down here in the quarterfinals? It's time to find out in the round of eight, match number three. I have a lot of confidence, but I have a lot of confidence in the game. I was able to win a very hard game, but I was able to win a very hard game. I was able to win a very hard game. The mental is a bit hard. It was a bit difficult to win. I was able to win a very hard game. I was able to win a very hard game. But I was able to win a very hard game. Eugene is a bit different from the other Protoss. It's a bit strange, but I think it's the same group. I think it's the same group. Jong-in-jong is also very good, so I don't want to play a good game. And Jong-in-jong is a lot of games. At the time, there was a lot of games. So I 
이번에도 기대해 주셨으면 좋겠어. 우진아 나한테 지고 관광 잘 하고 가려. 게임으로 관광 보내줄게. 8강부터는 다 열심히 해가지고 멋진 경기 보여드릴 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 게임 하면서 네, 다른 많은 수많은 무대 서봤는데 뮤지컬 무대는 처음이라서 팬들도 저한테 기대하는 만큼 좋은 경기력으로 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. Once again, two players face where one is known for solid mechanics and the other is known for creativity. It's Rain versus SOS. Rain, he's a player I like to look to to learn build orders, try to become better at Protoss, and SOS is someone I look to to just feel jealous that I'll never be able to win that way. I mean, Dario, what is it that makes SOS such a consistently sick player? Well, the fact is that he just has gut, it seems. Taking initiative of sure. the game for those big tournaments where there's so much price pool on the line seems to be the way to go. Because nerves play a big factor, and if you just want to try to play standard but are slightly off your game, you're not going to achieve anything. However, if you are dictating the game and going for that quick kill, you don't mind. You're not nervous, you're just executing your build. I think they mind and are a little bit nervous. I mean, it's yeah. like, I'm, I'm just playing my game of StarCraft over here and why everyone's watching. But, I mean, there's more to... Yeah, I, I agree in, in essence, though. Like, SOS seems to be the guy that, in these situations, is, is more unfazed and is okay. And it's worth noting, too, he's done really well in, in the PvP matchup specifically yeah. uh, to win some big championships. He's, he's got a lot of self-belief and self-confidence, I guess, is the best way to look at it, when he chooses the strategies and he never second guesses By the, by the way, hi, Apollo. Hello. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Apollo! You're Hello. not Nathanius. No. I changed out for Nathanius. Yeah. He, he's wearing a pink shirt. Otherwise, you guys are basically indistinguishable. No, that's not true at all. Uh, I hair. wish I did have his pink shirt, though. His darker hair and a mustache. Hmm. <laughs> now, I, I'm, I'm curious. What's, what's Rain got to do to break this streak that SOS has of, like, constantly winning the big prize money style tournaments? I mean, it, it's kind of funny because prior to this tournament, I would tell you that playing super solid rock steady is actually probably the winning strategy. <laughs> but so far, it's been like, no, you fools, like play super chaotic and weird. Rain is, uh, he's just got to stick to the, I think sticking to the game plan is something we could probably agree upon. Like, I think that was innovation's downfall. He got a little bit rattled by the two Roach All Ends and it was all of a sudden like, I'm going to bust out the Thor build, like Tesla said, from literally 2011, I think it was, when last time we saw that kind of thing. So, Rain, just stick to, your, stick to what you're going to do. You're, you're going to need to deflect some of these builds that are going to come at you from SOS. We haven't seen proxy gates in almost forever, but this would be the time for that kind yeah. of thing to happen. I think that uh, SOS is going to want to make this series very scrappy, and if Rain falls into that trap, that's where it's going to fall apart. So I pretty much agree with Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Pretty just much. have a post-it note on your monitor. <laughs> don't... don't Remember the time Go you off the path. Just I keep I, playing your build. I remember the time I went to, to Dario's place in uh, it was in Sweden, perhaps. He had yep. post-it stickers everywhere. It's an, it's a good thing to do. Doors. Oh, okay. Now it's getting weird. Now, everywhere. What, what, even as he was leaving, he was like, "Remember to smile as you leave your apartment." Like, <laughs> did it actually? Say really? That? Yeah, Dario, like did that. it say that? Were all the other post-it StarCraft related? Like no, right by his toothbrush no. is a post-it that's like. Never nine pull. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was one like there was one like do five pull-ups before going to bed above his bedroom door where there was a pull-up bar. Don't trust the man with the tattoos. He lied. <laughs> <laughs> like well, you gotta do what you gotta do in StarCraft to get that tiny little bit of edge. But here's actually, SOS too, and, and we yeah. were talking about this even going into the round of 16. Like he actually just kind of barely made it into BlizzCon. Like he needed the last half of this year, well not even half, last quarter to launch himself up there. But here's some of these maps. I mean, I, very expected, Moonlight Madness, Dash and Terminal, the standard down votes. Uh, but the thing I think that is most interesting about this matchup compared to the previous matches we've seen is that both of these players barely won their round of 16 yeah. match. I mean, Life 3-0'd cleanly, Innovation 3-0'd cleanly. There's many players that we got to the round of eight, not exactly sure what the full breadth of their play would be, but I mean, especially SOS just barely edging out parting yeah. in that series. I mean, do you think that sort of nail-bitingly close series leaves you with less momentum going to this match or more? I think it gives him a lot, especially because he had to practice for PvP compared to Rain who didn't and had to play against yeah. the Terran. It just carries through naturally. 
But at the same time, that means that SOS... Did you disagree? Had to, you disagree? Yeah, yeah, I disagree because yeah. SOS can actually look at a PvP that was played uh, out here. So that like helps him a little bit. A little bit. And even to Sean's point too, I actually think having your nerves tested in the, in the round of 16 does help you. It kind of gets you eased into the situation. I, I think Cactus Valley is a very interesting first map yeah. because four-player maps always make for an interesting dynamic in PvP, but especially because it is, in fact, such a huge map, feels way larger than it even winds up being. So that's going to be what kicks it off. I'm very curious to see if SOS has a special build plan, but i got to hear your predictions. Apollo, let's start with you. Uh, SOS for sure. I think the way that he's going to approach this series, despite showing a lot of his tricks already last week, is going to be superior to what Rain can deal with. Just going with the logic of this tournament, I have to go with SOS as well, because it seems that guts and taking risks is, is what is going to get you to the finals. Jeff? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, we were never wrong, right? Last time we all agreed on something and it ended up pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, I'm going with SOS. I feel like, it, especially in a best of five PvP, with Rain, um, it feels like the guy that kind of dictates the pace, something Dario said earlier, is going to be the stronger guy, and I feel like that's SOS. In the, in the matchup, SOS leads 8-6 to six historically. Rain is Rotterdam's favorite player, period. So <laughs> what do go. you know? Everyone else is in SOS camp, as am I. The lobby is ready. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, guys. I'm super excited to be here at BlizzCon again with you, Rotterdam, to cast your favorite player against the guy that we all think is going to crush him. Well, I didn't vote for him just because he's my favorite player. I mean, that may have something to do with it, but not everything. I truly believe in Rain. It's been a long time since he has been on this stage, Nate. He's had a good year. He's won a GSL, but he has actually never been on this stage. Rain has never made it to actual BlizzCon. He was there in 2012 for BWC and made it to the semifinals. And I think sometimes if he has a really bad night, he still has nightmares about that semifinals. But now he has a chance to forget about that for once and forever. Yeah, I'm very excited to see if he can push back that trend we've seen so far today of the crazier, the more conniving players being the ones to move on in advance. We just saw Innovation get shrecked by life. Will Reign's prowess hold strong in his standard safe game, or will he fall to the wit, to the skill, the crazy build orders that come from the man who only wins $100,000 tournaments? It's time to begin this PvP. In the bottom right position of Cactus Valley, we have the Red Protoss player from Jin Air Green Wings. Give it up for SOS! He is, of course, the champion of 2013 BlizzCon, and he wants to do it all over again. On the left top side of Cactus Valley, we're looking at the main base of the Protoss that's representing my insanity. Give it up for Rain! I'm not the only Rain fan in the building, mate. Quite a, quite a few cheers, you know. I, it's not like I have anything against Rain Roddy. It's just, if I know my Protoss, I, I'd say that the cheekier ones are the ones that have uh, a bit more danger to them, and SOS is probably the cheekiest player here if we're not looking at life. That is true, but you can't possibly have something against Rain. If you have something against no. Rain, you just need Starcraft. guy, Kev. I would never. Even though he plays Protoss, and let it slide. And he, he plays beautiful Protoss as well. Now, our first map is going to be Cactus Valley, as we all can see. And that's an interesting map immediately. We saw the Vitos, both players getting rid, rid of the kind of crazier maps out there. You know, Vito Dash and Terminal, and also Vito uh, Moonlight Madness. So that means we have a very standard five map over here kind of gives me the idea that both of these guys are very confident in this matchup and in this series in particular saying let's get rid of the crazy maps let's keep it as standard as possible all right so this gets to be the really fun part kev where i ask you what does rain like to do i'm sure you've seen every game he's played on all of these maps pretty much ever <laughs> talk to me yeah but you still have to switch it up you can't be too predictable now cactus valley is one of the larger maps out there so it's very likely we see at least one stargate opening uh, i wouldn't mind seeing it from rain but I think SOS is capable of doing it as well. Sometimes players like to go up to DTs very quickly. Some people go one gate fast, they spend Robo, but I think it's a little bit risky because Stargate is so popular. And then you have the Protosses who are like, well, this is a large map. People like to tack up very quickly. 
So let me do a three gate, and especially as a West, he's had a lot of success over the last few months by just three gating with aggression and having a late robo behind it. So the robo keeps you safe, you know, against blink stalkers, against uh, dark templars. But at the same time, your three gate pressure can catch opponents off guard, and sometimes straight up win games. Now we already see the sentry, so that could be a one gate fast expand for SOS. It could also be a sentry to go into a stargate, but most of the time this means one gate fast expand. Yeah, having that early force field allows you to push away early pressure, even following up with a second sentry immediately afterwards. Does the yeah. map play into this as much? It's cross spawns on Cactus Valley, one of the largest rush distances you have between two bases in the map pool. For sure, but I don't think Aswes knows that yet because he hasn't scouted at all. I think he's in the dark. Now, his build is actually good against what Rain is doing so far. And it doesn't even matter whether or not Rain goes for Blink or if he goes for Dark Templars because you follow this up with a Robo. Unless you're very crazy and you go Stargate, but there we do see the robotics facility going down. Now, if Rain opens up with Blink Stalkers, Cactus Valley is not a map where there is a whole lot of surface area to blink into the main base. So in general, you want to make a couple of blink stalkers, but then you're going to just accept the fact that, okay, my opponent is going to pump out Immortals. I can't break him. I'm going to have to expand, but your expand will be later. So I kind of like the opening stages over here for SOS, but that's purely the build order. You're still going to have to execute things properly. Yeah, so following it up very quickly with robotics facility for Rain, um, I'd imagine that this could possibly be related to, as you mentioned, the lack of information due to these very late yep. scouts. He's not entirely sure what he's up against, and of course, you don't want to be caught with your pants down against Dark Templar. You need detection, or it's an insta-loss. No, you're spot on. Like, we know what's going on, but right now, if you're in the shoes of Rain, you're still worried about an Oracle swinging in. You're worried about quick Dark Templars. You're worried about maybe this guy went absolutely crazy, you know, uh, Blink Stalk attack, or he's going to trigger pressure me right now and I need to be careful with my photon overcharge. By the time, okay, Rain is dropping an expand already, so I'm very happy to see that because that means that he's not going to be stubborn, he's not going to try to win with one base blink, which is borderline impossible. When you also get that safety robo and your opponent already has a robotic facility up and access to photon overcharge. Yeah, I think having the nexus done is the most important part for SOS this early on. Yep. That photon overcharge this early makes it very difficult to break off one base production. Uh, absolutely. So what does this mean? Well, it means that SOS is slightly ahead when it comes to the economy and slightly even five six workers that's pretty significant in this phase in pvp but of course rain he's gonna have some map control right he's gonna be walking around with his blink stalkers making plays happen once again very difficult on cactus valley but as long as you're out on the map that does give you the opportunity to keep your opponent in the dark maybe you can go up to three bases before him maybe somehow you can swing in with stalkers you know the the good old four stalker hit squad because that's all you need to one shot probes and then get out of there again so SOS slightly ahead, but Rain has the opportunity to make plays. And SOS finally gets that main base scout with the hallucinated Phoenix. Three stalkers are going to poke here. He does have blink, so he shouldn't lose anything. And he gets an idea. He's like, okay, I stole maybe a garden shield from you. Maybe I can still pick something off here. And whoa, oh. a hidden nexus from SOS trying to hide some cheeky economy here, right? Yeah, well, the boys on the couch already said it. You know, SOS definitely the crazier of these two. If, if uh, Rain could snipe that observer, that would be massive. The observers are so close to each other. Losing the ops would be very very, very painful for Rain in this phase in the game. He spots the Observer. Oh, oh, the Observer. Gonna get it. He will lose it. That means no scouting of the main base. These five Stalkers can still put pressure on, but with the Immortal and that Horton Overcharge, it's nothing doing for now. Nope. Once again, this is already where I mentioned, right? It's very hard to make plays happen with Link Stalkers on Cactus Valley. So, so far, SOS choose an excellent build. And, well, as we, Rain is actually going up to three bases Whoa. very quick. This is nine minutes, you know, going up to three bases in nine minutes. That's normally very uncommon. Rain probably thinks, hey, I'm going up to three bases really quick, having no idea that SOS is actually doing what he's doing. <laughs> I mean, in a weird sort of way, because SOS is investing into this northeast base, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but shouldn't it be more difficult for him to use that ninja base now compared to the third since he can't rally probes there from his main or natural yeah. this is actually not all that bad for rain uh, especially because i don't think as west knows about that base yet uh, it's a you know it's one of those accidental brilliant calls that you made if you're rain like right now rain is worried about SOS marching across the map and putting on a lot of pressure because when it comes to army supply as west is ahead but above all he's ahead with stronger units right he has immortals he has uh soon gate as well 
Uh, so this is what you're worried about. You're not worried about your opponent having a hidden base. Yeah, and other interesting things to note. We have a Warp Prism on the way, Blink for SOS, but that charge set up with Rain with very late gases on his natural. So many gateways, Roddy. Is this going to be a big zealot push? That could be brilliant because SOS has no idea that this is happening. And if there is one thing that, you know, Immortals with Charge are extremely good against, it's Immortals, especially when those Immortals are exposed. And it seems like SOS, he wants to be aggressive as well. Well, he does drop the Robo Bay now, Nate, but he's getting five more gates. So the, and he's getting Blink, so that still gives me the idea that he wants to make something happen with Blink Stalkers. And if he goes too aggressive, then maybe Rain and Zealots can catch SOS off guard. Like, the main reason why Rain is doing this is because he went up to three bases quicker, and he's expecting SOS to push out, right? Because that's normally what a two-base Protoss does with a stronger army against a three-base Protoss. So the Zealots, you know, they're awesome in defending against Immortals and Stalkers. But Rain, he needs to find out about that hidden base real soon because that will completely change the way that he thinks about this game. Yeah, he is going to go into that Templar Archive. Zealot's very mineral heavy, so he can dump all of his gas into Archons by getting this tech up. He hasn't taken the gases on the third yet, still just saturating it with probes. But the upgrades are close. Kev, whose position do you like more right now? <laughs> I, I think I like Rain's position more, but probably for different reasons than Rain likes his position more. Like SOS, he's going to try to see what's going on over here. He has to be very careful. He's not bringing his Mothership Core over here. If Rain would have a pylon in the middle of the map right now, and he would wipe in eight Zealots with charge, that would be the end of this army. Rain is probably looking at this army, and if I was Rain, I'd be start bringing my Zealots, man. There's no Mothership Core here. This yeah. is, this is your no, moment. No ability to recall means if he gets caught by those charged yeah. Zealots, they can clean up and catch that gap. They can close the gap so fast, he'll kill everything. I do love this by SOS, though, because he's giving Rain that uh, exact idea, right? I'm going to attack you now. It's about time that I'm going to attack you, as two Zealots are unloaded in a natural mineral line. Yeah, Warp Prism is spotted. It will make its way back towards that third mineral line. Not picked off just yet. Templar Archives is about to finish for SOS. Yeah, so Rain is going to have one problem soon, though. There is one Colossus out, and the second one is on the way. And these Colossus are phenomenal against every single unit that Rain currently has. So Rain is probably wondering, like, what on earth is going on in this game? I really don't get it. And that is, of course, because he still doesn't know about this hidden base. Yeah, not having that information makes it very difficult for him to continue to push his tech and economy forward because, as you said, he wasn't sure whether he'd be hit with a big two-base committed push or not. Yep, Rain is robotics base very late, so if I was Rain, I would start getting my second robotics facility as soon as possible. Now, normally, that's something you don't do, right? You don't go double robo against the guy that's supposed to attack you any moment now because because you feel like you won't get the value out of it before the big fight happens. That is because Rain is just being confused. If Rain knew what we knew, he'd be dropping a second Robo now. Because he has to catch up in the Colossus count for sure. It's a very tense moment. Rain is moving into a Warp Prism so that he can utilize that Charge Zealot upgrade. But still, at what point does that lack of Colossi tech or that delay in Colossi tech make this game irrecoverable for him? Well, I don't think it's going to be irrecoverable anytime soon. But it is very important that he always finds himself in a good position, right? SOS has three Colossus now. If Rain wipes in <laughs> Zealots from the right position as... This one uh, Warp Prism almost dragged the other Warp Prism towards a hidden base. Like, Rain starts his first Colossus now, and that is something that he's probably quite pleased with. It's all going to come down to where Rain will warp in his reinforcements from. He has four Zealots in that Prism already, so if you drop four Zealots and you warp in eight Zealots, flanking with 12 Zealots can make up for the fact that you don't have any Colossus, but his engagement is going to be perfect, because this army of SOS is stronger, quite a bit stronger. Yeah, those Colossi would love to fight by this choke. There's the War Prism reinforcing from the back. The Archons will also help kill. There's the first time War picks off the Mothership Core. Zealots are going to be dropped from behind on this army by Rain, but the Colossi are focus firing on the larger, meatier part of this. The War Prism from the behind is going to come in as well. The Archons are pushing forward. SOS is being pushed back into the corner, but it looks like his will be enough to take this fight. Brilliant positioning there by SOS, having a couple of Archons behind his army. GG SOS takes game number one. Kev, you said it perfectly. He didn't know about the third. He made some safer choices because yep. of it. And, well, he lost because of it. Yep, uh, very well done there by SOS in that final fight. But sometimes as Protoss players, we make the mistake of like having the Colossus in the back of our army, you know. You want to make sure that they are well protected, they won't get sniped. But then if you get flanked, that's when it gets very difficult because your Colossus have to walk forward. This time he never had to run with his Colossus. He was shooting, shooting because he left a couple Zealots behind his army, had two Archons as well. So, you know, the unload of the War Prism and the additional six, seven Zealots that Rain wiped in, they achieved.
achieved absolutely nothing. They didn't, you know, mess with the AI. Very well done by SOS. And this is that moment where if you're Rain, you're just wondering what happened in this game. And then you check the resource score and you're like, what? I thought I was on three bases, and then it all makes sense. It's like, oh my god, he had a hidden base. Yeah, and you know, it just sets himself up to be able to afford that attack as well, to make a big push like this. He had no idea this was coming. I really liked the Warp Prism play in the back, but it just wasn't enough. He did a great job of noticing that all those Colossi still fired on the meat of the army on the top side. Yep, and he left a couple Zealots behind, even Blink forward as well with the Stalker, so he took care of the Prism. He's gonna be like, all right, you'll warp in behind my army, but that is only going to happen one time, uh, and that's just going to be it. SOS with, you know, he did have a build order advantage. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, important, you know, especially on a map that big, I guess if you can't go for the cheeky, you know, proxy based on the fact that it's a two-player map, you can try to take advantage of a large map like that since you're much less likely to scout those corner bases later on when it is cross-spawn. And I just thought, really great way to utilize the map. Uh, Terraform will be the, the place for map number two. It is a two-player map. Does SOS break out the gates, Roddy? <laughs> it's possible. The money gates. Yeah, he's definitely not afraid. It's actually funny because the last two, uh, time that these two players played against each other is a couple months ago in the GSL run of 16. And back then, Rain was the one proxying SOS. And SOS handled it very well and was able to win the series 2-1 to one because of that game back then on Overgrove. Different map, different scenario. It is possible that SOS returns the favor. But, you know, he just played a pretty damn solid game, number one. Once again, the one gate Fast Expand followed up by Robo is very good against the Blink Stalker opening, especially as safe as Rain played it. So if I was Rain, I wouldn't freak out too much. And, you know, going for the same build if you're Rain is not even a bad decision because that build just works so much better on Terraform. Okay, so SOS up 1-0 in this series. Hot topic, Kev, that the, the crazier the more, you know, conniving players have had success. SOS wins the first game off the back of a crazy play yeah. that otherwise a fast third is something that Rain scouts very easily. Does he need to make plays like this in order to beat Rain? Um, I'm not sure. I think this is just SOS in a nutshell, right? Like, it doesn't matter whether he has to do it or not. I mean, if SOS goes up against you, like, does he have to proxy target you? No, but he's SOS, so he's going to do it anyway. Right. You know? That's just what SOS does, and that's how he will always approach. I don't think it really matters who he plays. Like, SOS is one of the best Protoss players in StarCraft 2 history, yeah. period. And, it, you know, it goes to show he's here. He's playing here at BlizzCon at the World Championship Series Global Finals, and that's not a feat that many other Protoss are able to say this year, but this is his opportunity, having already taken a Global Finals Championship to make it back to the semis, and of course, possibly moving onward to another championship title. Yep, and like Jeff mentioned as well in the pregame analysis, it wasn't easy for SOS. He had to go to a couple of tournaments in the latest stages of the year to secure his spot for BlizzCon, and this is something that Todd has mentioned multiple times throughout the season. You know, SOS missed out on BlizzCon in 2014. He wasn't able to defend his title. He had the option to go to a tournament but he declined back then, and looking back at it, SOS has always said, I really regret not giving everything I had on making it to BlizzCon again. So this year, you know, he said, make no mistake, I will go wherever I have to go to make sure I get enough points to make it. And well, he did it again. Yeah, it's been so awesome to follow his path because aside from that World Championship, of course, the uh, $100,000 winner-take-all tournament that SOS was able to win, and it really just shows that when everything is on the line in such a big way, he is one of those guys that just performs. And it's funny when you try to compare to other players because we've seen guys like Innovation kind of kind of yeah. flop out a bit, but then players like Life, who aren't actually wrecking it all year long, show up and says, yo, this is the biggest tournament. Okay, well, this is the one that I'm going to actually really prepare for or just play my best. It's one of these things that we can't really explain. And whenever we talk about it, we often mention the X Factor. And, you yeah. know, like, what is it really in StarCraft 2? Well, we don't know, but some players, they just turn it up in these big tournaments. As West is one of them, Life is absolutely one of them. And slowly but steady, Classic is really becoming one of those guys as well. Yeah, I, I guess that's, for me, the most interesting part of this PvP series is that Rain is not a player that I would say has to rely on an X Factor to make insane plays randomly. He shut down Pult and Stellar fashion but it you know for the most part wasn't off the back of craziness he had that weird void ray build on terraform <laughs> but aside from that he handled the very medevac aggression drop heavy play that pulp brings to the table where majority of protosses in the world just crumble 
True, but I mean, I, I do think it's fair to say that Rain is not the same Protoss as he was in 2013. Yeah. Back then he was absolutely rock solid, would never cheese, would only defend, and he would just try to straight up outplay everybody. 2014, that was already a little different, and 2015, I would even say that has become very different. Doesn't mean that Rain forgot who he is and that he forgot how to play defensive. He can still do it, but he is more cheesy than he has than he has been in the past, way more even. And would you be happy if he proxy gated in this series, Rod? Um, maybe if it's game five or something, you know, <laughs> just to make it really crazy. But I don't think that Rain has to panic too much. Okay, he lost game one, Cactus Valley. But every pro Protoss player will tell you if you open up, you know, with Blink Stalkers and a robotic facility. And by the time that you scout your opponent, you see that his Nexus is done. You see that the first Immortal is out. That's a difficult position to play from. Uh, put on top the fact that we were playing on Cactus Valley, where it's borderline impossible to blink into the main base, then you can be like, well, that was going to be a hard game to win regardless. You know, you just picked the wrong build, you got a little unfortunate, tried to switch it around. Of course, looking back at it, a lot of people will say, well, you know, you should have really scouted the hidden base. That is partly true, but it doesn't change the fact that he was already behind when it just came to the build orders. Yeah, I think that's a pretty a fair assessment. Looking at these two players and the other, you know, the last match that we'll have after this, uh, who do you like more against uh, either Hydra or Rogue? Who do you think has the best chance to actually take out one of those Zergs and move on to the Grand Finals? Mm, that's interesting, because we saw SOS not too long ago at DreamX Stockholm, where he did lose against the Zerg in the semifinals. Um, who was it again? The guy who won, Nate, you the know? The guy who won? Yes, DreamX Stockholm not too long ago. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I do not think that SOS is invincible in PvZ. When it comes to Rain, I am not 100% sure about his PvZ right now. I'm sure it's still good, but I don't think either of these two guys is as solid against Zerg as Classic is, for instance. All right, we'll have to see which one of these guys will have that honor to play in the semifinals. We're loaded into Terraform. In the top left position, our blue Protoss player from My Insanity, he's Rain! On the right bottom side of Terraform, we're looking at the main base of the world champion of 2013. Give it up for SOS! It was Solar, Nate. Solar. Right. <laughs> Against Sian, I remember a lot of roaches now. Yes. I mean, come to think of it. So SOS definitely not invincible in PvZ, but I don't think that's something we have to worry about yet. I don't think that's something that SOS is worried about right now, you know? When you go up against Rain in the quarterfinals, you only think about one thing, and that is PvP, and which build orders am I going for? Yeah. So far... Uh, I mean, anything, anything to notice, Kev? Because I always... This is something that always crosses my mind. I think a lot of players think about this and think of SOS and two-player maps. All of his buildings are on his own side of the map. So <laughs> where does the madness start? Is this a map where, realistically speaking, SOS could actually try to hide a base, or does he have to do something else if he wants to maintain the current level of madness? Yeah, I don't think he's going to hide a base again in this series. That would just be weird. Like, Rain is good enough to look at the resource core of that previous game and immediately figure out what went on and, you know, what actually went wrong in that game. He's like, okay, you are you have mined way more resources than I thought you did. You obviously had it in a base. Uh, I'm not going to fall for that again. Now, I've seen quite a few games from SOS on Terraform, and a lot of Protoss players like to open up with a Stargate, you know, Rain being one of them. Sometimes Quick Twilight, sometimes Stargate. I wouldn't say he does not too different. That is kind of a Stargate pylon indeed, as our observer was showing us. But SOS, he loves to go for the Tree Gate pressure here, and Tree Gate pressure can be very, very successful against Quick Stargate openings. So, looking at the, just the, is it the distance of the map? Is it the way that the bases are laid out? What makes that gateway aggression so successful? It's also, be, uh, one of the main reasons, I personally think, is because Photon Overcharge doesn't reach the ramp. So, if you put on three gateway pressure, you can often get a pylon up into the main base, oh, and then you can okay. just wave with your stalkers there on the high ground, so you won't give uh, ramp, con ramp control away, and I think that is very, very useful. It's, this is very interesting. It's a sentry, but also a second gateway. Yeah, so... I mean, th I've only ever seen this in some weird defensive setups. That's usually what the early century is for, but at this second gate, is it possible he goes into Stalkers after this century, or do you think he's worried? 
I am, I'm not exactly sure where he goes with the sentry first. It could, yeah, actually, it could be sentry, stalker, stalker, and he follows up with a twilight, so he just uses, uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go, twilight going down. Uh, so the benefit of going for this very quick sentry is A, like Nate mentioned, you can force field your ramp and, you know, you'll be safe. And B, it's such a quick sentry that you will get a hallucinated phoenix out very early on. You can send it to the other side of the map, and then you will immediately know if you have to worry about an oracle, dark templars, or, you know, maybe... Uh, robotics facility or an expand so it's a kind of it's an interesting opening and it's an opening that a couple of protos players definitely enjoy quite a bit yeah so two more gateways and a sentry are coming up here for rain wow. is he the one that's going to be bringing this this aggression yep. in the start Yep, he is. So it's very important that Rain keeps his probe alive that is on the other side of the map right now. I think he's in the right top side. Uh, there we go. This one probe is very, very important. He's going to follow it up with a Stargate even. This is kind of an SOS build. Rain is doing a build that SOS will do, and I feel that SOS is kind of playing a style that normally fits to Rain. So the world is upside down right now. SOS is to be very careful. Oh, Losing a Stalker is definitely... into the bushes, and this Stalker will wow. die trying to run home. Keep in mind, SOS has that sentry to force fuel his ramp. He can buy himself some time, but with the pylon complete behind the natural mineral line, he can reinforce the position very quickly. Actually tries to force him, gets his probe up, Bro, starts the pylon. pylon. If he can finish his pylon, this could be the Pandora's box to open up a wormhole into SOS's base. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to finish it, though. I actually think this is good enough for SOS. No, he's going to focus on the stalkers instead, but more stalkers show up. You need to take care of that pylon. Oh, no, I don't like that point, too. That's too many stalkers, I think, for rain. The pylon finishes. Stalkers are attacking, but the probe being pulled off the line. Defensive warfare are going no weapons inside of SOS's base just yet. There's the first few stalkers being added into the mix. They've got stalkers spread all over the place fighting against those probes. They have to surround on the stalker on the ramp. Wow, SOS is actually doing this so well so far. He's putting up a master class of how to defend against three gate pressure. Cleans up the pylon, cleans up the stalkers. And of course, his blink is going to finish up soon as well. Uh, there is an oracle on the way though, and this is something that SOS has no idea about because he used the energy of his sentries. Oh, he finds his second pylon as well. Wow, beautiful defense by SOS. Oh, what a what an intense moment there. Rain barely getting that pylon up. You know, some people looking at that, is it the legacy of the Void Cinematic? Just 40 zealots coming mm -hmm. No, he shuts it down without breaking a sweat. Now this this Oracle gift, this is this has to be everything right now for Rain. Yep, I'm gonna take a look at that photo uh, that mothership core one more time of SOS. It's gathering energy, but I don't think it has a whole lot of energy just yet. Where is it? Uh, okay, I actually don't yeah, think that's going to be in time. This is very good. So Rain might be able to do a lot of damage with his Oracle, and he can kind of buy time for himself here with his Photon Overcharge, and he will need to because we're going to fight Blink Stalkers against non-Blink Stalkers. Yeah, Rain following this up with a Void Ray. That Oracle is going to run in. A Stalker in two centuries. He's just focusing down throw so far. Only two dying as that Stalker blinks oh. out. So he shows that he has the Blink done, but can he actually win a fight here? He's oh. going to fight 4v4, but he's got that Blink. Yep, I I don't like this fight at all for Rain. Oh. It's very risky to step this far out of your base when your opponent has blink stalkers and you don't. As West, very far ahead right now in this game, I feel. Yeah, this is a really good spot, I'd imagine, as that Nexus is done. He has the robotics facility. Uh, there's that single void ray for Rain, but does that really add too much here against this blink stalker composition? Uh, now it's pretty easy to out micro void rays actually. I feel this is more like a desperation void ray, but it's you know as a West right now. If I'm as a West, I make nothing but blink stalkers. This is not a moment where I'm going to queue up my first immortal or something. It's like no, I want to put pressure on you. And I think as West really regrets canceling that pylon he had on the other side of the map because he has no way to reinforce his army right now. And it's almost like Rain knows that because uh, normally if you have seven, eight, nine blink stalkers, it's very easy to out micro a void ray. Yeah, the, uh, the targeting time on that bad boy does need to charge up on you with that prismatic alignment, so it's not very easy to just pick off stalkers quickly. This Oracle's going to go in for round two, though. Boats and overcharge pushes it back. And SOS is playing on fire so far. I love reaction time. I love everything he's doing. He is actually just running behind enemy lines right now. There is a golden overcharge available, but of course not in the natural just yet. So these probes are kind of exposed. He gets three workers. He was already ahead when it came to the worker department. Four, and he's probably just going to blink out of here. That's so well done. Yeah, forces the overcharge and just gets right out. A phenomenal play by SOS to scoop up some damage, get some scouting, and continue to stick 
you know, just so much pressure right on Rain. SOS is dominating so far in the series, Nate. Up 12 workers now, still has way more micro potential than Rain currently has. Oh man, these two stalkers are the hunted right now. Rain, run away, guys, go! You gotta just jump right on top of him. First one gets killed, second one hiding in the bushes. There's that Void Ray. Managing to kill two of these stalkers, so not, not the worst trade ever, but you know, every unit is so valuable right now for Rain. And even this fo defensive photon cannon is going up for SOS. Yep, and Photon Overcharge as well. I mean, SOS is convinced right now that he's very far ahead economically, and he's right. Where is Rain his reinforcement pilot? This is so risky. He just made it to the other side of the map without a reinforcement pilot. And he's going to try to swing in with the Oracle one more time, but uh, just doesn't do anything. It's a very unsuccessful life, that Oracle, as it gets picked off. And Rain just being pushed. He's being poked and prodded. Those cannons are done in the, in the natural expansion. He's got these stalkers poking him from the west side. And at this point, the setup is just so much better for SOS. I'm honestly not sure what Rain's supposed to do in this position. Yeah, he has done a good job in chrono boosting out probes, though. So despite the fact that he lost a couple, he's actually only four behind. I guess this was kind of his goal, right? By running across the map. He's like, I'm going to give SOS the idea that I'm about to all hit him. This is it. And SOS is like, oh no, he's attacking me. You know, I need cannons. I need to focus on defense. And Rain was actually playing with fire there. He was just chrono boosting out workers without having any way to actually commit to that attack. So if SOS would have had a whole bunch of Blink Stalkers, I think the game would have just ended there. But SOS read into it as an all-in. He didn't expect it would be that easy. Focused on defense, and Rain slowly but steady crawls his way back into this game when it comes to the economy. Yeah, and he's uh, trying to catch up as much as possible. Still down six workers. That false warp prism going in there, trying to do a little baiting action on some warp. It's oh, actually wow. baits the post and overcharge, so yeah, it's not funny. bad. <laughs> it's free. It's free. I mean, here you can see. Bank, Kev. Yeah, here you can see that even world-class players like Rain get a little nervous every now and then. Wow, it's so cheeky! Immediately sends another. Yeah. One. It's like, oh well, that, that worked pretty well. <laughs> so you know, it's BlizzCon. Nate's, uh, <laughs> Nate, and Rain with is this, going to with hallucinate. this crowd. How could you not be a little nervous playing in this stage, Kev? Mm -hmm. First, hallucinated Phoenix makes his way across the map, so Rain will be able to identify that SOS. Uh, that's three bases. No, it's going to deny the scout man. This SOS is playing sick right now. He is. He's, he's everywhere. Fire. His awareness level is through the roof, man. Nothing's getting by him in this series. Uh, charge is coming up. He's continuing to pump out those Colossi. Plus two attack. Charge. You name it. He's got it. Yep. Rain just now is going to have Blink finish up. That almost gives me the idea that maybe he wants to make an attack happen with Immortals and Blink Stalkers and still that single Void Ray that he has. But it's very hard to uh, make an attack like this work. He stopped on 45 probes as well, Nate. There is a small chance that he cancels that Nexus and he just goes all out. He just made three pylons. You don't make three pylons when you have 20 free supply, four pylons, if you don't want to attack. So I think Rain is going to try to go for a very crazy attack. Maybe blink forward, hope to snipe that Colossus. You know, there's only one Immortal for SOS. Is that correct? Yeah, not. Doesn't seem that there's too much of a backbone okay. here to this army. There is just one immortal with that army. Sometimes if your opponents go up to uh, Colossus too greedy, you can try to make big plays happen with all your Blink Stalkers, but Charge is very good. How oh, if he gets oh, if he cuts him off here, he could actually cut him off here by the rocks. The rock point is so tight. Here comes the engagement. He's going to step forward. There's the Guardian Shield fighting in a very tight choke. Four of them actually put the time warp on top of those two immortals. First one that they picked up. The Void is going to try to focus on the Colossus, but the Stalkers do destroy it. The two Colossi in the back still firing, and GG is called SOS. Not to be destroyed by that positional flank from Rain. Those Zealots did some serious work there for SOS in game number two towards the end. It looked a little risky because sometimes when your opponents have a lot of stalkers and you only have one immortal, things can get dicey. But he had a lot of Zealots. He had plenty of Zealots with charge and those are phenomenal against stalkers. And Rain, I think he fought too far away from a reinforcement pilot, but it doesn't really matter because what does matter is that SOS played phenomenal the first 12, 13, 14 minutes yeah. in this game. Actually played awesome throughout the entirety of this game. Really didn't make any mistakes. His awareness all series long with using his blinks to catch those forces has been top notch. And down 0-2, Rain has to start. He has to mount his comeback on Bridgehead. And this is a map that, you know, at the beginning of the season, we thought a lot of cheeky things were going to happen here. Kev, PvP, is there something that Rain can do, or perhaps SOS can do, to get some style points finishing this series? Well, this is one of the more popular proxy maps out there as we take a look at a couple of the highlights. This was very key, by the way. And I almost feel that maybe he should have tried to build two pylons as quick as possible. I know that's a big investment, but then at least you know you never have to worry about your pylon dying. As it was, he focused the pylon, then he went for the stalkers, 
He got a couple of free shots off there. I think a moment like this, Rain should always put the low HP stalker towards the back, but he just wants to get up there. And he's like, all right, my pilot is still alive. I can start wiping in units, but I think SOS pulled the perfect amount of probes. Not too few, not too many, because he was still mining, you know, during all of this. Just excellent focus fire, gets this around as well. I mean, you can't defend any better. Yeah, I think this, uh, I think this Windows 10 game DVR shows us everything we need to see, Kev. He did not have the necessary forces. And then here, these two colossi just even in this, this choke of a position. He has the spread, but there's just too much. And you said it, the, zealot with, the zealots with charge, they get right on top of those immortals and just rip them apart. Yep, on top of the immortals, on top of the stalkers and zealots, they're actually very tanky units. If there is no Archon in the mix or there are no three, four colossus zapping away at them, if it's just stalkers and immortals, you know, zealots uh, survive surprisingly long. And we are setting up as the map takes over our wonderful stage here at BlizzCon 2015, SOS and Rain. Rain is down 0-2. He needs to win three maps in a row to keep his BlizzCon dreams alive. And that, that comeback has to start on Bridgehead. Yeah, against the Protoss that just doesn't lose a whole lot in the last few months. He's been on fire ever since he won the MSI in Seattle. He made top four at Dreamhack, and it kind of looked like he was going to win Dreamhack until Solar upset him, but SOS has been an absolute monster throughout the last few months of StarCraft, and it seems like nothing is stopping him, Nate. That has to be a very, very tough comeback for this gentleman on the east side of Bridgehead. Give a cheer if you want to see him come back. It's my insanity's reign! And on the left side of Bridget, we're looking at the main base of our Protoss that's up 2-0 in this series. He's representing Jinna. Give it up for SOS. He is playing so well. I mean, may maybe I was wrong, Nate, you know. I'm not afraid to admit it. We have not. None of us have been an absolute star this tournament in predicting no. who is going to win. I think that really shows the theme of this tournament, though. It has been the madness. It's yeah. been the unexpected surprising the players that are known for being the most solid, the most standard, on point. And that's just, you know, I, I think it's very fitting. It's, uh, it's the Wild West out here finishing up part of the swarm. Yeah, and how crazy would it be after we just saw life made it to the semifinals? If another previous BlizzCon champion makes it into the semi-finals, uh, I mean, imagine a rematch in a potential final wow. between SOS and Live. The know? true champion of champions would be decided there, man. That would actually be, uh, I, I think that might actually be a dream final for so many people out there. And it's looking pretty possible now. Life just showed such phenomenal play so far, especially in the round of 16, and coming up here today already against Innovation, but SOS, he does have to close things out here. Rain is the kind of player that can do this. This is not something that he looks at and says, well, it's all over, you know? No, if you're down 0-2 in the PvP series, obviously that's a very, very uncomfortable spot to be in because PvP can be a vulnerable matchup. You get caught off guard by Dark Templars, the game can end right there. You lose a Mothership Core, you have no Photon Overcharge, the game can end right there against the Tree Gate. So it is a very shaky position to be in, but if you're Rain right now, you just got to forget about that, Nate. You know, just drop everything and just consider this a best of one. This is an interesting uh, build order by SOS. Will most likely be a Stargate, but it could be a Twilight opening as well. You know, oh, actually, maybe it's a one-gate fast expand. He's done it before on maps uh, like this. Okay. Wow, well, both are doing that? Core. Okay, so quick expands by both players. Wow. We've already seen a little bit of madness on this map in PvP, and we saw uh, a little bit of that already with the Stargate play and then, well, then the untimely demise actually between parting and SOS in the round of 16. Now on almost every other map, if you go one gate fast expand, you follow up with the Robo, but Bridgehead is an exception because of the way that the ramps work and the rocks work. There is a good chance that we actually see one of the two, you know, follow this up by a Stargate, and that is a very uncommon and normally very risky play in PvP, but on this map I've seen it multiple times and it can be very strong. Yeah, uh, also important to note, of course, as the series has been progressing, you know, if you disagree with, uh, with the experts, of course, you've been able to tweet, hashtag WCS, who you think will win, hashtag SOS, or hashtag Rain. Uh, not too many Rain fans left there, Roddy. No, uh, bandwagoners. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two extra gates are going down for this Protoss that we were just mentioning, of course, still representing my insanity. 
so it's a one gate expand into three gate. As West is doing the exact same thing. Neither player has scouted their opponent, but they are playing a mirror image PvP so far, which I, I find kind of bizarre because this is not even the most common build on Bridgehead. You know, it's it's solid, and this is one of those maps where you can get away with this super quick expand without being too risky about you know, let's say a Stargate opening or maybe even the, the super quickest possible three gate or super quick blink. And but they both go straight into Robo afterwards, Kev. <laughs> Just very, very standard, put together, expand, three gateway, Robo. Well, are they just both going to tech up Rush to Colossus too? It's dead even so far. I mean, you definitely want to get at least an Observer, or maybe it's Immortal Observer or Observer Immortal. Because, you know, if you check the vision of both players, they have seen so little. These are the first scouts that are heading out right now for both of them. Rain is going to send his first Phoenix out, and SOS is sending his first Phoenix out. And I, I, I mean, if I was playing this game, I would get a small smile on my face. I'd be like, well, we're doing the exact same thing. Well, you know, at least we agreed upon this, you know, that this is a good build. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, one of those interesting moments where you get to think back with those guys in the analysis desk, say, of course, which player is going to do each step a couple of seconds faster than the other, Going where you have to edge out those advantages. And if any of the build order choices will give those advantages, already we see the first uh, diversion, right? We have the Forge the opening up now family. for SOS, and we have Rain, like what we mean, Twilight Council. I love how you say already. It's seven minutes and ten seconds into the game, and they just like, they're doing something different, guys, you know? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. happening. <laughs> Uh, so this could mean that SOS is setting himself up very defensively. He wants to focus on the upgrades, while Rain on the other end most likely wants to get Blink Stalkers out and start being a little active. A very early War Prism there by SOS. Now, Blink Stalkers are excellent in shutting that down. So Rain is going to find this Forge and he's be like, all right, so what is going to be, you know, the addition to that? Yeah, that third base is now on the way for Rain. Actually, only two probes on gas for SOS there. I hope he notices that uh, soon. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Fix it. All Blink. right. He's got that plus one attack coming in. Rain does have Blink on the way, as you mentioned, Kev. War Prism is about to finish up. The robotic Bay is coming in. Do you feel this? Does this War Prism have a place here? That that pylon spreading by Rain actually looks pretty good on the south side. Uh, I mean, there's always a place for a War Prism in PvP. You can always make something uh, happen with it. He's going to pick up three Zealots. Now, there is one trend, and that has been going on throughout this entire series. SOS drops his Robotics Bay way before Rain. And I, I don't think the same logic applies that we always believed in Wings of Liberty. You know, the guy with the quicker and more Colossus always wins in PvP. That's not necessarily true anymore. Anymore. But if you don't have quicker Colossus, the ball is in your corner. You need to make plays, and this oh, is an excellent play. That War Prism gets caught immediately, and it will go down. A huge investment lost. These Zealots, likewise, will also die as rain. Well, this you could say this is the first break he's going to catch in this series. Yep, he's going to be ahead in army supply. He's going to be ahead in map presence. As the West even cancels his Nexus, didn't what? he drop it already? Uh, yeah, it was on the way, man. It's gone now. I mean, now. I mean, he went straight into a War Prism straight into Colossus, he doesn't have Immortal, so it's a very safe play. Maybe it's the right one. I guess it is, because Rain is going to have so much micro potential with his Blink Stalkers that SOS wouldn't have. Now he restarts it before Blink is even... F okay. I don't know, Nate. This take it, take it away. This game's getting <laughs> funky, Roddy. That's all I can say. He's got the Big Daddy Colossus out, but it's still quite vulnerable to Blink play. Yeah. Rain is way ahead on workers. The only advantage he's going to have is his plus one attack that's done for a little while longer. If I'm Rain, I wouldn't mind starting to poke here a little bit with my Blink stock as Dark Shrine going down for SOS as well. Oh, he does. He goes right in for it. He actually gets the Colossus. The Forge just actually trapped all those elements of centuries in here with the Stalkers at the same time. He's going to pick everything off. He has the Blink. All he needs to do is micro, micro, micro. Yep, he ends up losing a couple stalkers here, but I still like this very much for Rain. The two sentries there as well, that's hell, you can't go there. Another forward blink, he's gonna get another stalker, and he should be able to get another cancel on this base, and Nate, that is so massive. Yeah, I don't know what SOS is supposed to do now. The only thing he has what? on the way is that war prism in that dark shrine. Okay, <laughs> yeah, those units were not fighting for a while. Pylon going down now as well. SOS will most likely cancel this Nexus again. You don't wanna let a Nexus finish up that's this low on HP. He's buying time though. These units are all on this side of the map. That war prism, you mentioned it, it's making its way to the other side of the map. Cannons are going down for rain, but how many observers do we have? That dark shrine is going to be done very soon. Ooh, Barely any 
observers on the map, though, like you asked, Kev, that Colossus is here. He loses the cybernetic score, though. So no more sentries, no more stalkers either. I really think Rain should just back off right now. Like, you're on three bases. You're super far ahead. You know that you're not going to lose this if anything crazy happens. Like, why keep all your stalkers here? Well, like, this is the only way you can still lose. Oh, my God. He doesn't see it yet. Let's see what happens. Three Dark Templars stroll into the main base. He blinks into the main of his opponent and grabs the Colossus again, just trading his army here against this Nexus, against these forces. At the same time, those ZTs actually caught up on the oh. robotics facility. He's going to snipe it. The probes are on the run because there is a photon cannon there. He just needs to block it. He needs to protect this cannon. You know, this is one of the SC2 master missions. You know, hold, hold position with your probes. Protect that cannon at all costs. He's trying to snipe the main. Dark Templars will take care of one base at least, so you know they're gonna be even in bases. Rain is still ahead in workers, but not where's, by a whole lot. Where's the observer? Didn't yeah. he have one? Yeah, but it's on the other side. It's coming back right now, okay. but it's too late. Okay, loses the main base, and these DTs are gonna run away. Go and work on that Twilight Council now. And let's not forget, he also lost his robotics facility, so he has to rebuild it. He's rebuilding it right next to two cannons. But is that enough for SOS? He's still just on two bases. Uh, it's something, though. <laughs> I, I, okay. I don't know if it's enough, but he's definitely doing some serious damage with this. Look at all this lost mining time, sniping the robotics facility. Uh, he bought a lot of time for himself there. Yeah, so he... Gets himself a moment to breathe here, perhaps before his last breath, as we have Rain once again trying to step out onto the map. I mean, you could even say maybe it's more than just buying time. He has two Colossus, Nate. Charges on the way, and how amazing those Blink Stalkers were previously if these Zealots get charged and there are two Colossus. All these Blink Stalkers of Rain, they are not going to be all that amazing anymore. So Rain is going to try to force a fight right now, perhaps when the Colossus count is still low. Very risky. Could work out if he gets a good flank off. I think this army positioning is pretty risky as well. If yeah. Rain moves in quickly enough, he might be able to just get a lot of damage on, in on this sure. Nexus before those Colossi are even there. Yeah, Josh is not done yet. Maybe a forward flank. No, that would be way too risky. Not even Rain is that crazy. Three Colossus, though? Mm, there's a lot of uh, firepower behind this army. Will he commit? Uh, this is very risky what Rain is doing here. He's down seven army supply. Ends up losing a couple stalkers. Uh, I think the best thing that Rain could do is just double Robo Colossus. Yeah, that War Prism is still on the other side of the map as well, looking for an opportunity to jump in. He's going to take a fight in the center of this map with his Zealots without charge. So the Colossi get a couple of shots off him. He's mostly trading on Zealots, not wow. that expensive. Those Dark Templars completely turned this game upside down. Suddenly, as a West. Oh, okay, that is a very big warp. That's 10 Zealots, man. He warps into DT and two Zealots to actually block that. That's actually a really wow. nice usage of his warp in to prevent the Zealots from pathing into that mineral line. The warp is going to try to adjust that spacing. He does. He needs that charge so badly. Everything is going well for Azawes, so that was a brilliant block with his Dark Templar. That's what 7, 8, 9, 10 Zealots for Rain, and That's they achieved... A, that was a high-level warp in, man. Yeah. He, he blocked it off perfectly. So many more Zealots being warped in. I guess he's getting ready to defend now, but... SOS, you're right. He's, he's flipped this game on its head. Yep. Now, the only uh, problem for SOS here, he has a lot of army supply still on his side of the map. He has to be a little bit careful. Uh, Maybe this well, is Rain. He just gonna walk right into the ramp. He walks right into the army. The Zealots do have charge. So he gets those first hits off. And the next wave of reinforcements is on the left side as well. Four Colossus against zero, Nate. I don't think it matters who you are. You're not supposed to win that anymore. He's got the ZTs and the Zealots in the main base. Once again, the Stalkers are going to try to run up and blink onto these Colossi. They run safely tight behind those zealots as they clean house even with the dt getting the assists in here the stalkers look up they grab one of the colossi they grab the second colossi there's one left but the army's gone gg sos takes the 3-0 in a fantastic turnaround to sweep the series against rain phenomenal performance by azuas absolutely from game one game two he was absolutely flawless i think of terraform and here game number three he showed us even when he's behind a little bit even when things don't go his way early on he has the skills to bring it back dark templars you know nate it never gets old when behind dark shrine the dream is always alive showing that championship caliber play once again to move on to the semi-finals and sos does it he goes to the semi-finals the hundred thousand dollar man signing right here on stage takes down his opponent. Let's let's talk about the match a little bit though. It was quicker than the other ones, but I remember in game two, we, I'm sitting backstage with the commentators, and we were all freaking out because you let that pylon finish in your base, and there's like extra stalkers coming. We're like, as soon as it's like, there's only three hits left, and you were just like, oh no, I'm just gonna casually let him waste more minerals and then take everything away. Was that intentional? So he two one to as all. 그 수정 탑이 그냥 완성되게 놔뒀잖아요. 근데 완성된 후에 추적자 들어온 것도 그냥 침착하게 보시고 
그것까지 다잘 막으셨는데 그걸 일부러 그냥 어떻게 조금 더 해보려고 완성되게 놔, 놔두신 건가요? 아니면 뭔가 그냥 또 곤란해가지고 놓치신 건가요? 제가 저도 창원 간문이 빨라가지고 파수기도 있어가지고 충분히 막을 수 있을 병력이라서 그냥 냅두긴 했었는데 그래도 확실하게 막을, 막을 거였으면 치선 아니 깨는 게더 나았던 것 같아요. 결, 결과적으로는 잘된것 같아요. Um, you know, I was pretty confident. I had my warp gate technology all finished, so I was like, all right, I think, you know, I've got my sentries. I should be able to block this. If I was going to guarantee a win, maybe I should have took it down, but hey, it worked out. So I win the game, I move on, and I go 3-0. And of course, I asked you this in the round of 16, too, but, but we have to wonder, I mean, the fashion in which you took rain down, is, is, are, you, are you sure there's nothing about the prize pool that, like, motivates you a little bit more than other players when you come to these tournaments? 저 16강에서도 여쭤보기는 했는데 이런 경기를 보면 다시 여쭤볼 수밖에 없어요. 분명히 그, 그 우승 상금이 정말 상관이 없나요? 우승 상금이 높을 때만 정말 누구도 기대하지 못했던 그런 경기력을 보여주시는 주시는 것 같아서 궁금하거든요. 어, 상금이 적든 많든 한 경기 한 경기 다 소중해서 열심히 하긴 하는데 큰 경기에서 더잘 되는 것 같아요. So, you know, going into the match, I, you know, I don't think about the prize, but I'm still going to take it one map at a time. But, yeah, you know, you're right. I think, I think I just feel a little better when there's a little bit more money on the line. I feel more comfortable when I enter that booth. Ladies and gentlemen, the $100,000 man, dollar sign, oh, dollar sign, moves on to the semifinal here at the WCS Global Finals. It continues to be the players with the creative strategies who are known for their mental fortitude and tough positions that keep advancing on. I mean, Sean, that was, that was just classic SOS. Hidden expansions, losing when way behind, or excuse me, winning when way behind. It was really kind of incredible to see the way that he picked Rain apart throughout the series. And I'd like to say I expected it, Day 9. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, saw, I saw your prediction on the stage. Don't worry, Apollo. He, he played true to his recent form. I think everyone yeah. who's followed SOS in the last couple of months knew that coming into BlizzCon, we were going to see something special from him. His performances in team leagues, his performances in international tournaments. He traveled to America, won a tournament here. He traveled to DreamHack towards the end of his um, run this year and also performed very, very well there. And I think he performed like he should have and like anyone expected him to. Yeah. It's the sort of punches that he pulls out that I think are very unnerving because so let, me, let me tell you a story. You're in the booth. You're trying to focus really hard. You have all your build orders planned out. Maybe you have a notebook. Maybe you have sticky notes. Yeah. Game number one happens, you <laughs> lose, and it feels a little weird. And then you go look at the replay, and it's a hidden expansion. And that, you just feel so dumb in that game, because you realize you just could have sent a probe up, and you just could have seen, but only after the game. And then that's where all the massive second guessing comes in, where you start to think, wow, I need to prepare for everything. And of course, there's yeah. no way to do that. You have to start dictating the game pace yourself. I think you make a really good point, Day9. And I think even actually going beyond that in, in the series itself, it felt like in each game, Rain did something that I feel like would normally work against just about everybody else. And it's a pretty darn good move in PvP in particular. But SOS just kind of survived it, out microed it. And even in this situation right here, like the pylon not dying is supposed to be the fatal flaw of, of this choice. The force field behind four stalkers when you're kind of outgunned in that position, also supposed to be bad. But somehow SOS kind of finds a way. And that's why it's interesting, like 3-0 on paper, if people looked in on this and maybe they were off eating pizza or something like that, they'd look in and be like, wow, that's he dominated him. Actually, in all three of the games, it felt like SOS like found a way to win, but was kind of behind or kind of struggling. And I think it was a really cool series that way. I wouldn't even say that he was struggling, though. I think the main problem sure. for Rain was in the end that, yeah, he was doing okay, but he never managed to end up with really that end game PvP yeah. competition. Every single time, SOS had the Colossus, Rain had this mobile army, but not really finding the fights in the open space, but in choke points. Very good point. I mean, throughout this Windows 10 game DVR, it's a stalker heavy army across all three games, which are great when you're pulling moves like this. This was the moment where I thought, wow, Rain's going to win this game and do it yeah. in a very cute gateway heavy fashion. I mean 17 blink stalkers there. But 
Dark Templars are a good unit, <laughs> and we talked about this at the start of the, actually the start of the day, that there's about 20 little things you gotta keep track of in this matchup. Uh, I mean, but look at that game, like, I guess we're gonna go past it, but even the Photon Cannon that rains natural is in a super weird position. It's not covering the mineral line. It's by itself, it's not even protected really. Like, you do want that Photon Cannon for those Dark Templar, but he didn't have one in the main, he had one weirdly placed in the natural. Like, he's gonna look back at those moments and be haunted by it, but SOS, He's just friends with Lady Luck right now. Like, that's the kind of stuff that Rain always has. If it's not an Observer, it's that 12-minute Photon Cannon because Dark Templar become a thing in every PvP. But not this time. It's just very... I mean, in that last game, you pointed out really nicely, Blaine Stalkers were actually the right call in that situation and were winning him the game. And that's when the DT show up. And Rain had to have been like, ah, Scooby-Doo, and you're, you know, they just look so mad at that moment in time. I don't know what he would say. <laughs> Probably not Scooby-Doo, but something <laughs> explicit, not family-friendly. You know, it's interesting, everybody is saying how the money is probably motivating SOS, but maybe it's more the opposite, actually, that he can stay more Do you calm. disagree with Chobra right now, as well? <laughs> That's a creative way to be a well, host. I, I think nobody's safe in this whole room. I think the <laughs> truth is it's harder for everybody else to play for that big of a title and that uh, sure. kind of money because in StarCraft you don't necessarily want to be too emotional in the game. If you're over-motivated, you can also make mistakes. Yes. So SOS so actually seems to be that kind of guy who's just not intimidated by that kind of price money and manages just to play as good as always while everybody else might drop off a little bit. I mean, that, th that creative edge that SOS uses, I mean, I've gotten the chance to look at a number of SOS replays. He doesn't nail every pro production. He misses some pylons. He forgets to macro sometimes. And those are the sort of things that it, for any other player, and you hear players talk about this all the time, I messed up, missed those deep posts. Oh, God, just pfft. my mechanics are falling apart. And they focus so much on that, but SOS consistently talks about the decisions that yeah. he needs to make and does very creative, on the fly, strong judgments. So it's like he's unalarmed when his mechanics mess up, he's unalarmed by the prize pool, and then winds up being one of the most interesting and innovative Protosses. I think that's very um, stylistically healthy for the game, too. Instead of having having a lot of innovations in a row that are playing that same yeah. way. It's always yep. good to see a player like SOS come onto the stage and you don't know what to expect and it's, it's entertaining. Sean, that's such a good point. Like It goes all the way back to Brood War and it's so cool because we actually have in my example, the guy Boxer here himself. We're going to see oh, him yeah. later play an amazing match on that stage. But it was always like Boxer is the micro guy. He'll have his money will spike, his, you know, his his base will be a little bit disorganized, but his army control was flawless. And then there was other Terrans, like Isle of Ooh, who was always the guy that, yeah, he had good micro, he was one of the best, but never, ever missed a macro step. And, and yeah. in StarCraft, oh, you yeah. can really, you can be one or the other, and, and some guys, of course, I mean, everyone attempts to be both, but it's really cool to see the specialization. Well, right now, we have Classic versus Life, two players in the first semifinal. We know that SOS is waiting in the second semifinal, which leaves one more quarterfinal match for us tonight. Coming up, it's going to be Rogue versus Hydra. See you soon.